Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, today I want to talk about this 286 computer I have here. This is a case and parts I've assembled from stuff I've sort of found or bought on eBay. And uh, in this case here, I have a 286 motherboard. It's made by the company DFI. But it's an AMI BIOS. Uh, it's got two there. Here's the processor here. It's, uh, it's an actual Intel 286 12 megahertz. Um, SunTech is the chipset. It's got ISA slots, a few 8-bit, and then it has memory. It has two different types of dip memory you can use, but this has one megabyte installed. Well, the computer seems to work perfectly, and uh, here we are booted up. Uh, see, here you go, 286, I have 1.4 meg floppy, uh, VGA card, the BIOS is from 89. Currently, I have the serial ports disabled. Um, the C drive does not work properly. So, right now, I am using um, this compact flash uh, to ID adapter here, but um, I've actually tried, if I, I have a Western Digital here, and um, what happens is if I boot the disk or boot the floppy disk for DOS, uh, currently using DOS 6.22, but I've tried DOS 3.3, um, I can partition and format the hard drive without a problem, so I have I think a one gigabyte card in here. Uh, this BIOS is old, so type 47 I can get 503 megabytes or um, I think I have it set for 32 right now, it's just doing some diagnosing. If I format this, that works fine. I can copy some files onto it. Directory here, so there's some files, and here it's gonna count up the uh, free space. So the way it's partitioned right now is because I have it set for 32, it's you know a 150 meg hard drive or something. And as you can see, it, it reads fine. And um, see here, like mouse.ini, if I look at that file, type mouse, uh, INI. Uh, there's the contents of the INI directory. But if I try to read something that's bigger than 1024 bytes, so you see that's 28 bytes. If I do like scan disk INI, it does not work. Scan disk uh, INI. What happens is it just sits there like that. And if you look at the front, the hard drive light's just solid on. And this amber light here is the access light that's just solid on. And after a little while, it will get, you get this, not ready, reading drive, see abort, retry, ignore, and fail. So as you can see, I can obviously write the contents of the disk perfectly. I can format it. I format it slash S, you know, but it will not boot. And I can't read anything that's larger than 1K. Now online, I found um, this, which kind of talks about all the jumper configurations on this computer. Things like weight states, clock speed, battery, monochrome, uh, memory configurations. You know, this is how you plug, up, plug in the jumpers. I have done everything I can do to troubleshoot this thing. Um, running at six megahertz, no same problem. I swap out the IDE controller card here with a different brand altogether, another ISA one, same exact problem. Solid state or uh, SD card or the physical hard drive, same exact problem. I tried the VGA card, I tried an EGA card, which is sitting right here, same problem. Um, I have pretty much done everything I can, different versions of DOS. Um, I fiddled with all the jumper settings, I've set this to 512 megs or 512k of RAM, same problem. I set it for 640, same problem. I changed it from 0 to 1 weight state, same problem. Uh, the battery on this uh, board has been replaced, um, so I'm using this. Um, this is a, like a, from a cordless phone, 3.6 volts. It actually charges it because it's 286. Does charge this while it's plugged in, so I've bypassed the battery. Uh, in the BIOS, there really aren't very many settings you can configure. Here we are inside the CMOS setup. There's absolutely nothing really to configure in here. There's just one page. Um, obviously, I've changed the hard drive type. I've tried to fiddle with different stuff here, like different write pre-comp and uh, landing zone. I mean, I'm just currently set to this type 32, but it doesn't matter what type I, I set. It just has a problem in all of them. And uh, scratch RAM, I, there's one other option you can pick there. Uh, you can also use this uh, type 2 is reducing base memory type to 1K. It makes no difference. Um, everything works perfectly from the floppy. I can boot the floppy, I can run programs off of it, no issues whatsoever. But, like I said, hard drive access doesn't work. I'm utterly stumped. The only thing I haven't tried changing is, this is the only AT power supply I have, but a multimeter sitting here because I did check all the voltage rails uh, on the power connector. Everything is fine. On the ISA bus, I actually checked the ISA bus clock speed, so it's running at 12 megahertz right now, and if turbo is off, it runs at six megahertz. 
And of course there's the, me the PC master clock, which is about 14.31 megahertz. That's on the oscillator pin on here. And that is also perfect, um, correct time. So I'm completely stumped. If anyone has any ideas of what might be the problem with this board, I really appreciate it. I've never seen a problem like this. Googling around, I found one other person talking about it, but the thread just sort of ends and it was from several years ago and there's no conclusion. I have no idea. Um, I do have a 486 DX266 motherboard and that motherboard in this case with this power supply and this disc controller and VGA and um, hard drives and floppy and keyboard, all that stuff works perfectly. No issues whatsoever. But if I use this 286 motherboard, it doesn't work. So I am stumped. I've never seen a motherboard where everything seems to work perfectly. You can boot, you can use floppy disks, you can run programs, you can run diagnostics off of floppy, everything works. But as soon as you try to read more than 1K from the hard drive, it freezes up. And if you, if you write any size, it works. If you read less than a K, it works, which is probably why directory works and why F disk works and why I can copy and stuff, all that works. So yeah, utterly, utterly stumped. Oh, and I, I've, I did swap uh, different IDE cables as well. I've tried three different cables actually, but these cables work fine in my with the other motherboard with the same controller. What I'm about to do is take the motherboard out and I'm gonna remove every single chip that's in a socket and uh, check the contacts and reseat everything just to see if that kind of helps. I've run the Check It 3 application. If you guys remember Check It 3 from the old days, it's kind of like a PC diagnostic program. I ran the memory check 10 times, uh, no problems whatsoever. All the other diagnostics check out absolutely perfectly. So I'm just utterly stumped. If you can give me any help, I would really appreciate it. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Bye.